Okay, uh, welcome everyone once again uh, to the divine ministering divine healing course. Uh, hope you've been learning uh, something new, uh, and I hope it's been encouraging you to step out uh, in faith and to take the risk and praying for uh, people uh, who are in need of uh, healing and miracles. Right. Um, so let's just continue. Uh, before we go ahead, uh, can I request uh, one of us to just lead us with a word of prayer, please? Anyone, just feel free to go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we come to the throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for this day and the new day you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn from the word, Lord, ministering, healing, and deliverance, Lord. Lord, your ministering, Lord, your ministering power, Lord, guide us and show, Lord, Lord, compliment us, Lord. Whatever in future, whatever the ministry, Lord, all of the one of us are going to do, Lord. Lord, we need your power, Lord. We need your companionship, Lord. We need you to guide us, Lord. We need to, we need you to protect us, Lord. Lord, we need your fear, Lord. We need your wisdom, Lord. Lord, guide us so that we can understand your each and every word, Lord, whatever we should be taught, Lord, it should just not kept in our heart, but it should be Lord, practiced in our daily life, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, all right, guys. So let's just get started. And, uh, you know, I just want to start off with this question. Um, you know, it's a simple question which we've addressed before. Uh, what according, why, according to you, is ministering in divine healing important or necessary? Feel free to unmute your mic and uh, share it. It's okay. Very few of us today. So. Do, why do you think it's important? You've addressed this before, so yeah. Is it necessary? Yes, Lubeka, please go ahead. I think it's also part of the great commission God gave to us. Right. He really said that when well, uh, those who go in my name, whatever you will, whatever you will speak in my name will be done. You will touch the sick, you will heal the. It was a, a long statement, so I think it's part of the divine mission. Awesome, thank you, Collins. Um, yeah, a a anybody else? There's no right or wrong answer, so just go for it. Okay, Zelatoli, what, what do you think? Okay, can I say something? Okay, Isaac, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's necessary because even at the and in this age of technology, there are diseases that maybe medicine cannot heal or medicine cannot be available but divine healing is always available because according to what we have learned it is an a power that we have received or we get mm -hmm. through the the uh, the commission of jesus christ and through the holy spirit mm -hmm. so it is necessary awesome okay thank you Isaac. Wait, so the question was uh why uh, do you think that uh, ministering in divine healing uh, important and necessary. That, that was the question. Okay, thank you so much, Pastor, for the question. Like, according to me, uh, it's part of the Great Commission, mm -hmm. and Jesus has given us the authority to do so. So, we are to exercise our, um, you know, uh, authority and dominion on earth mm -hmm. because uh, God has given us the authority. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Zara. Hey, okay, um, so guys, uh, please understand that I'm not asking a question to test your knowledge or anything, but uh, you know, just for you to voice out uh, on what you think. Okay? Because most of us, if not all of us, uh, we're quite familiar with you know with the topic of healing, uh, and we know that God heals. Uh, we just have to think. So why is it important in ministry? And such? Okay. Uh, John, well, why, why do you think it's important? Um, it's important, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the Great Commission, and also it also manifests the power of God um, to people. And so, as we continue to minister healing and deliverance, it attracts uh, people to know Jesus, 
and it's not to uh, boost anyone personally but it's to represent jesus yeah. okay sorry yeah sounds fine <laughs> hey uh, nikki uh, so i mean if you hope you got the question so um uh, in do you think it's important for us to move in divine healing and is it necessary for the today's church um yeah i think they've already covered the reason so i would say for all those reasons and it just like so many times when you go out and sometimes you pray for people they get healed and you're just like okay that was jesus follow me <laughs> so it just makes life a lot easier right, to yeah. share the gospel also yeah yeah yeah, yeah. awesome okay yeah thanks thank you uh all right so thanks guys thank you all so i think uh i mean we're all on the same page uh and you know one of the things that we've been addressing from the beginning is that god loves people and the introduction uh you know itself is a living life the jesus way or evangelism the jesus way right in in everything uh you know in, in everything that jesus did everything uh, in every miracle that he performed he drew he drew people to himself right and they encountered the love of god and um and in all the different strategies that we can come up with for evangelism which i'm sure are all great and i think this is um this ministry in divine healing uh is evangelism the jesus way so to say right um so let's just do a quick recap and i'll go ahead and share my screen so we'll do a quick recap of uh chapter 2 and what we've covered so far so okay so the chapter 2 uh title god's word on healing so come on so okay there we there we are and i hope everybody can see the screen yes no i think Great. Uh, God's word on healing. So we quickly uh, let's do a quick recap. Uh, we uh, we looked at the point of uh, the source of sickness, disease, and ailments, and we see how God created the world perfectly in His design. There was no flaw, right? There was absolutely no flaw in the design. But uh, the fall or when sin came, it, it deviated us. It, it's like the dislocated shoulder. We were separated uh, from the spirit of God, and when that happened. everything uh you know uh because of man's disobedience uh the decay step uh, stepped in corruption in our flesh stepped in right and uh we see that uh every creation was subject uh, as slaves and every cre- every creation is longing to be delivered you know, for that day and um and and so that's one of the things we saw and we see satan's activity and direct involvement of demonic spirits due as a result and as the consequence of the fall uh we see that as uh, the satan uh, the devil inflicts a uh, certain sickness like, such as incurable diseases uh defects birth defects deformities uh etc etc uh and in the natural causes for some of the sicknesses like you know using of substances or alcohol uh, that ruins our body right uh, and that can lead to one thing to another and so and in all these three points uh, you know we see that how a human body undergoes decay and corruption and we saw a couple of scriptures that even in first corinthians 15 first uh, corinthians chapter 15 53 uh, 54 it says that corruption should put on incorrupt right Uh, and then mortality will put on immortality um so there is coming a time and a day where this body is decaying day after day day by day um, but eventually for everyone those who believe in jesus this mortal body will put on immortality a body that will not decay uh, a body that doesn't know corruption yeah um so those are the points that were addressed with this so and one very important um foundational truth that we all need to get in our hearts and in our minds in our in, you know in us is this question that the response to the question does god sense sickness and it has to be an emphatic no so the so discourse is about ministering divine healing right that means all of us uh, will be ministering uh, in divine healing to anyone someone and 
And it's so crucial for us to move in the knowledge that, hey, God did not send this. Right? This back pain or this chronic um, arthritis, whatever the condition is, diabetes, etc., etc., the list can go on. We don't care. But what we must know is that God is not the source of sickness and he does not send sickness. And when we minister from that place, uh, the, um, the, the level of conviction and authority is very different, right? Um, so that's a very important question for us to understand, uh, uh, you know, get in our hearts. And we did that. And a uh, few passages on understanding difficult passages. Uh, you know, there are some, there are conflicting uh, passages in the scriptures that, you know, it'll, uh, makes us wonder, okay, why, why is this verse talking about, you know, on all these chapters, um, the verses are mentioned. Uh, and, and in short, uh, the only thing that you and I need to know is that God's best is revealed to us in Jesus, right? And I think one of the statements that was made uh, is if you don't understand the most difficult passages, uh, but understand Jesus, you've got it right. Uh, that's a quote from Pastor Akish. He says, if you don't understand the most difficult passages, but you understand Jesus, the way he lived his life, the way he loved people, the way, the way he went around ministering divine healing. If you understand that, you've got it, right? And so who God is, is perfectly revealed to us in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus healed all who came to him in faith. Amen. Um, and then we see uh, the next point was God permitting the consequences of sin and the works of Satan to continue on earth for a certain time. And this example of the landlord and the tenant. Uh, what happens uh, in a rented house within the family, the landlord is not always responsible. Um, right? You, we use, you can use all the electricity you want and then you finally get the bill. You can't give the bill to the owner to pay for the electricity that you use, right? Um, etc. That's just another example. So um, you remember this, and uh, and so in quick summary, we saw that um, demonic works and man's actions. God cannot give or bless people with something he does not have, and so the source of sickness is not God. Right? He does not send sickness. Um, and every time he did, uh, he would use some of the natural elements of the world to get people's attention or communicate something or bring divine judgment, right? And so, and then we started with this thing on the basis for ministering, healing, and deliverance. The basis, again, more foundational truths for us to minister in healing and deliverance, okay? Now, the first one is, it says, nature god it's in it is in god's nature to heal everyone he, that's in his covenant name jehovah rafa you see in exodus 15 26 um right our view of sickness disease and demonic oppression must come from the understanding that god is healer and deliverer okay that is the first basis of ministering healing and deliverance that it is in his nature to heal everyone it is he wants to see his children be whole and live life uh, you know the way he intended original right to walk in the fullness of health uh, and and everything right then the next basis is the cross the cross is god's remedy for the fall uh, and we see that uh, in an Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, verse 5, he says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was buried for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. Right? Um, and he bore our sins. He bore our sorrows, our shame, our pain, our sickness, our transgressions, our iniquities, everything on him. And he took it to the cross, and it was nailed to the cross. Right? Uh, I think uh, it doesn't end there. Just, let me see if I get this verse right. Romans chapter four. Uh, 
Let's check the code. You don't have to turn them on for us. Yeah, Romans chapter 4, verse 25, the last verse of that chapter, it says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. He was raised to life for our justification. Okay, I'm reading from NIV. Does anybody have an NKJV? Um, New King James Version, would like to read, please. Romans 4, 25, anybody or any other translation? Romans 4, 25, 25, N NKJV says, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our ju justification. Yes, who was raised because of our justification, right? Uh, he was uh, delivered to death uh, for our offenses, for our sins. And he was raised after we were justified. Once we were justified, uh, when, you know, he, Jesus was raised. And you will learn more about this when you do the course on Romans, I think next year, or I forget, I think finally, yes. But anyways, um, let's see how we are justified by the cross of what Jesus did on the cross, amen. Um, so moving on from there, um, we saw uh, multiple verses on the cross. Um, it talks about Matthew eight seventeen that that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying that he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And there's multiple scriptures uh, mentioned uh, on that. Um, Okay, and I think we ended. We ended here. Healing is uh, is the children's bread. Like Jesus came to heal uh, the people in the covenant that were the Jews, but he also healed those who were not in the covenant, uh, the Canaanite women, the Roman centurion, and another example mentioned here is the Syrophoenician women. Uh, is also uh, the same uh, example. The scripture Matthew 15 21 28 is also in Mark chapter 7 24 and 30. Right? Um, how in this context, uh, there's a lot of things that we can speak about, but then one of the things that Jesus refers to is when he says, that, uh, um, When he says uh, in verse 26, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Uh, but he's referring in this children's bread to the healing as well. And then when, when, when the woman persists and perseveres, uh, she gets healed. And so now that we are in the new covenant, um, you know, now that we all believe what Jesus has done for us on the cross, we are the people of the covenant. Means uh, healing is for us; it's there for us, right? The table is set up, for, is set for us. It's our bread; we have the right to it. It's our privilege uh, to reach out to the table, right? If we just don't have one loaf, I'm sure there are loaves and loaves of bread set for us on the table. We just need to walk in that identity knowing that we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. Um, so that's where we stop at. Uh, let's move on understanding uh, the basis of ministering and deliverance. Um, there's some more examples. Um, the basis for ministering, healing and deliverance, the word of God. Right? The word of of God. God works through his word. Right? God creates through his word. And God carries out his work through his word. And we see that in Psalm 33, 6 and 9. Um, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Interesting, right? It's not plural there, not words. It's just by the word of the Lord, 
the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Right, and he, he said, and it came to be. Okay. So God works through his word. God creates through his word, and he carries out his work through his word. Hebrews 11, 13. Uh, just give me a second here. Okay. Uh, Hebrews 11, uh, ch chapter 11, verse 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Okay. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Right? By the word of God we're made. Um, there's another scripture, uh, I mean, you can look into it. It's Psalm 138, verse 2. Psalm 138, verse 2. Can anyone read that for me, please? Okay. 138 verses 2 I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness for you have exalted above all things your name and your word yeah. thank you Sid. Okay, for you have exalted above all things your name and your word right? uh, there is another translation that says uh, you have exalted your word above your name um, and, you know, we all know these scriptures, it says, uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away, right? Um, the power of God is resident in his word, okay? The power of God, okay? this has to mean something to us. Right? The power of God, about who he is, he is power, isn't it? Is resident in his word. And um, I mean, think about what John 1, 1 says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? Um, he is the Word. Um, he is power. And, and it's no wonder it says the power of God is resident in His Word, because He is the Word. And as Hebrews 4, 12 states, that the, for the Word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Okay. We can do an entire semester course or something or just to understand this, for the word of God is living and powerful. I guess. Um, just think about it. Okay. And I... Uh, the, this is living. The fact that it's living makes it supernatural and prophetic in nature. Amen? Uh, and the fact that you and I can hold a Bible today uh, itself is supernatural because there's so many wars that's been fought uh, over this book. So many rulers uh, you know, in the past have tried to destroy this book, burn it to ashes, uh, you know, burn the Christians who are involved uh, with this. So many, so much blood has been shed, but God preserved his word so that for a day like this, it's like, okay, you know, Someday in the future, my son or my daughter needs to hear my voice. And for that person, for that sake, I'm going to preserve my word. Amen. Um, and what a privilege it is today. We have so many different translations, so many different versions. We are spoiled for choices, uh, really, isn't it? Um, so this word is supernatural. Uh, it's prophetic. Uh, right, and so uh, we need to just let that sink in and we read this the verse it says, For the word of God is living and powerful. So, this is one of the basis uh, 
uh, foundational truths for ministering in divine healing, knowing that this word, uh, word of God, in the word of God is God's power and he lives in it and he works and he creates through his word. Okay, God's word carries God's healing power. His word carries his healing power. Right? Psalm 107 verse 20 says, he sent forth his word and healed them. Right? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The word is healing or medicine to our entire bodies. Okay, let's look at this beautiful verse in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 and 22. It says, my son, give attention to my words. Give attention, listen to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. Okay, they find what? The word of God, okay? The words of God is life to those who find them and help to all their flesh. Isn't that wonderful, right? So, um, to God, the word is healing or medicine to our entire bodies. Um, you know, some of my uh, young people always ask me, uh, tell me, um, if, when it comes to reading the word, um, uh, you know, it's, I get bored reading the word because uh, I, I don't understand it, uh, you know, all the time what I read. I, and I don't remember uh, what, what I read. And my answer is, it's okay. Okay. Uh, how many of you remember uh, the breakfast that you had last Tuesday? Before? Yeah, I mean, if you remember, that's great. <laughs> but uh, how many of us remember the breakfast that you had for last week, Tuesday or Wednesday? Which, um, I don't. But it still gave you the strength to endure that day, at least the first half of the day, isn't it? Right? I don't always understand the food I eat because um, I don't cook a lot and I don't I don't need to understand every ingredient that's going to making a dish uh, but all I need to do is eat <laughs> isn't it so um, it's very, it's, the word of God is a bread of life isn't it that's what the Bible says and uh, it's okay if you don't understand it it's okay you know if you don't remember the next day or whatnot we ask God first to help us remember, but he, it gives us the strength. It makes that day possible, isn't it? Right? So um, let's see, look at this scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word, of God, which you heard from us. When you received the word of God, which you received from, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men. Wow, this is so encouraging, isn't it? Uh, you welcomed it not as word of men, but as it is in truth. The word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Right? They honored the word. Um, they welcomed it. Uh, this is, uh, you can find this video on YouTube uh, of, a, of a tribe. Um, I don't know which island, I forget. Oh, man. I forget, okay, but it, it it's a very remote island and a village and a tribe, uh, and they are receiving a, a copy of the Bible in their language for the first time in their life, right? And you know, and you see the video. The aircraft is coming. It's it's beautifully documented. The aircraft is coming and landing into the village. The entire village 
everyone, right, from, from the young and old, everyone is there to receive. And the chief of a village says, you know, again, he quotes John 1.1, 1, 1, he says, he is the word. And we want to welcome him. And we, for the first time, we get to touch the living word uh, in our, and get to read it in our own language. And, um, and, and I'm pretty sure this is how this must be, that, that must have been uh, the, the state of the people, uh, you know, in, in Thessalonica. Isn't it? And they, for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in the truth, the word of God. And the point is, it effectively works in you who believe. Right? The word of God is alive, like we read in Hebrews chapter 4. It's alive and living. Right? It effectively works in you who believe. Okay? So the word must be mixed with the faith in our hearts for it to produce through reading, meditation, and the practice of what God instruct, instructs us. In Proverbs 4, 20, 22, as we just read, Proverbs 4, 20, 20, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Okay, through reading, through meditation, and the practice of what God instructs us, we receive healing and wholeness for our bodies through the word of God. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Um, this is, I mean, it's again, a very familiar scripture. Can someone read that, please? Romans 10, 17. If I get there first, I will read it. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Thank you. Very, very familiar uh, passage. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ. Okay. Um, the minist ministering of the a ministry of the word builds our faith. Right? When, we, when, we, when we preach or teach the word of God, it builds faith. And we see that as an example in Acts chapter 14, verse 8 and 10, as mentioned here. As Paul was preaching, uh, it says, And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. Uh, Paul observing him intently. I mean, there was, as Paul was preaching the word of God, it created a hunger and a thirst in this person. It stirred up the faith in his heart. And he was like, almost like gravity. He's like, okay, you know, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. And Paul observing him intently, seeing him that he had faith to be healed, releases the word and he is healed. Amen. Uh, so let's not take God's word for granted. Uh, and I know we don't, but uh, let's just cherish it. The ministry, um, one of the key foundations in moving in divine healing and ministry, uh, ministry and healing is, is teaching and releasing the word of God. Right? The word of God is also the sword of the spirit, which we are to use as a weapon against the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, 7, 6 verse 17 teaches us, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay? Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, as we speak and declare the word of God, that what God has done concerning our health, healing, deliverance, freedom, authority, and victory over sickness, disease, and demons. God's power will be released on our behalf. Amen. Okay, so I hope you guys are with me. And I hope you guys are able to follow and learn and encouraged. Okay, so for yes, no, maybe. Okay, 
Okay, thank you. So, uh, and we also see the, uh, the promise of renewed strength and longevity. Um, something very important here for us to uh, just learn about as well. As stewards of, go of what God has given to us, we must take care of our physical bodies and health through proper diet, exercise, and rest. Okay? We must obey natural laws God has sent in place for proper care of our bodies. In God's word, we see God's heart revealed. He promises to renew our strength and vitality. He promises to renew our strength and vitality, right? Um, and see in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Exodus 23, 25, 26, uh, it says, I will fulfill the number of your days. The last the last part of verse 26, I will fulfill the number of your days. And Deuteronomy 33, 25 says, In your sandals shall be iron and bronze. As your days, so shall be your so shall your strength be. Psalm 103, verse 5, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Right? He's a renewer, he restores, uh, he's a restorer. Amen. And so many scriptures where you know God's heart for us, his intention for us is to live out uh, the, all the days of our lives uh, in, in strength and in vitality. Okay. Another basis for ministering healing and deliverance is the Spirit's power, the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, we, we read in, in previous chapters, is in the last chapter, how everything what Jesus did, he did in the power of the Holy Spirit. Right In Luke chapter 4, verse 17 and 19 says that uh, he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's one. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind to set liberty those who are oppressed. Okay, so we see that uh, Jesus is declaring that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed uh, me. And so many scriptures like that. In Luke 5, 17, it says, Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Acts 10 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Okay. Um, and so we see that, uh, I mean, time and time again, we all know that uh, you know, everything that, in everything that Jesus did, he did it in the power of the Holy Ghost that was on him because he was anointed. Uh, and there's some more scriptures. Uh, it just didn't end with that. Even those who touched his clothes were healed. Mark 5.30, it says, And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crown and said, who touched my clothes? Luke 6, 19. And the, and the, mult, the, and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. Okay, it's like, like the real substance that went out from him and healed them all. Right? It's like something just more real, like this glass of water. It's so real because I'm holding it, isn't it? And the way scriptures are quoting what Jesus did, it says, the power went out from him. It's like 
there was actual substance that he was carrying because he was anointed. Um, amen. And um, the Lord Jesus also confronted and cast out demonic spirits by the power of the Holy Spirit upon him. So let's just pause here for a second and see everything that he's done with the power of the Holy Ghost. Right. First, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and anointed me to preach, right, to release the word of God, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He's come to set the captives free, right? to recovery of sight to the blind, to set a liberty those who are oppressed. And then he, we see that he healed everybody who came to him. There are so many scriptures, uh, and we've read them so many times so far, is that he had compassion on all those who came to him, and he healed them all. You know, once again, we see in Acts 10, 38, that he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about healing and delivered everyone who were oppressed by the devil. And as if that was not enough, uh, you know, people touched him and they were healed. And as if that was not enough, um, by, the, by the Spirit of God, he cast out demons. Amen? So the power of the Holy Spirit is far greater than the powers of darkness. It's, it's, it's no comparison. I, we don't need to have a debate about it. It's like, okay, this was this. No. <laughs> there is no equal. Right? It is the anointing that destroys the yoke of oppression and removes burdens, setting people free. Right? Isaiah 10, 27, uh, just end with this for the session. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from, his, from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. The presence of God's spirit stops demonic works. Okay, the presence of God's spirit stops demonic work. Um, how many of you know of a place or, or, or an area in, in another person's lives or wherever in, 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 in the atmosphere of your city or your village or your town or your nation, wherever you're from? Uh, and if you believe that there is this atmosphere of darkness, this is um, you know, the influence of the demonic in this area etc etc uh, we don't need to be impressed uh, but we know there's someone greater who is with us right the presence of god's spirit stops demonic works period there's no discussion there's no ifs and buts oh maybe no 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 amen right are you guys uh, with me right, in all of this uh we are anointed to minister just like Jesus. We covered all of this. We saw that Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit and saw everything what he did for us to know that the same Holy Spirit is made available to you and me. Amen. Same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and lives in me. Right? There's a couple of scriptures that's mentioned here. It says, the Lord Jesus promised that we will do the works he did and even greater works. Okay? Now, we have to just come to terms and believe, first of all, that we will do the works that Jesus did. Okay? We don't, some, most of us or some of us don't go beyond this point. Are you guys with me? We need to believe that we will do the works that Jesus did. And then even greater works. Because I go to my father. That's what the scripture says. And, and um, Luke chapter 24 verse 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with the power from on high. Acts 1.8 it 
says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay, I just stop sending the screen here and uh, as a conclusion of this session, because I want to encourage or remind us, uh, and again, you know, it's like I'm teaching slash preaching to the choir here because we are all familiar. Um, I just want to remind us that it's the same Holy Spirit that's made available to you and me. Amen. Um, I'm, I'm reminded of this story uh, because they start about this in, during Christmas. Um, you know, in the, in, in the Old Testament, there are hundreds of prophecies about Jesus' coming, his birth, right? And that's God's master plan. That was God's master plan since the fall, isn't it? That in, it starts in Genesis chapter 3, that he will send his, his seed. And it all came down to a point where Mary had to say yes. Now imagine this grand plan of God. Uh, the whole plan was just, it was dependent. I'm just, God is God. He will have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, etc. But it's amazing to see how humble God is that he was wanting to hear that absolute surrender from Mary. See, yes, be unto me as you will. And in so many cases, I think it's a story with uh, it's, it's true in, in us that the Holy Spirit wants to come over us and move in us and through us. But it just comes down to that simple yes. I surrender. I give you complete control for you to come and move in me and through me. Um, so as we conclude this session, I want to encourage us uh, you know, to just surrender every area of your life. Uh, you know, to him, I and mean, only you know the areas that that is partially surrendered and not fully. Um, all for him to move uh, in you and through. Amen. Okay, I hope you guys are all still alive. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording now and we'll go for a break. Okay, and. Uh,